So as we are hosting virtual machines, resources, services inside Azure, there may come a time, especially for a virtual machine, where we want to create a public IP address. And what this public IP address does, we can assign it to a virtual machine, and that will allow the an internet user to be able to access this particular virtual machine. So we might want to do that if we're hosting our own web server, or, uh, data server, or whatever. Anything that we want public uh, access to, we can give it a public IP address. Now, the way we do that is we create a public IP address first, and then we can assign it to a virtual machine. Now, I don't have anything to assign it to, so I'm just going to walk you through the process of creating a public IP address at this point. So I'm going to go to All Services, and here in your networking category, you're going to see DNS zones, network managers, virtual networks. We've already done one of those in a previous video. IP prefixes, gateways, all right, all kinds of things that we can configure. So I want to create a public IP address. So I'm going to click on my public IP address, and then notice what it does here. It allows uh, inter internal resources to communicate inbound to your or internet. There we go. Read the word correctly. Internet resources to communicate inbound to your Azure uh, resources. You can also associate public IP addresses to Azure resources like VMs to communicate to the internet and public facing Azure services. Okay, cool. Now that I got that, I'm going to create a public IP address. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to create one. I'm going to put this in my resource group for my demonstrations just to keep everything protected because or everything together. So it's going to simplify my life as I get more and more things built here. Uh, now, I'm going to configure an IP address uh, name. And so this is like a name for me to remember what this is being used for. So this is going to be my, let's do public ADDR uh, for, and we're going to call it external server. So notice, by the way, it has issues if you put a space in it. It makes its life easier. Okay. Then, well, I actually won't let you do it because it does make their life easier. So IP version, do I want V4 or V6? Do I want uh, standard or basic? Now, I will tell you this is kind of a irrelevant question at the moment because if we click on basic, we see that, hey, as of September 30th, uh, 2025, that's going to be retired anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this as standard. And then do I want this to be zone redundant or not? And since I'm just doing this for a demo, I can set my zone redundancy option. I'm going to say no zone. And then regional is fine. So, oh, still more. Didn't go down far enough. All right, do, routing preference. Now, remember, anytime you get one of these things pop up, you can, or any one of these options, you see this little eye here, you can get the little pop-up, that's what I was trying to say, that'll tell you a little bit more about it. So this tells you the difference between the Microsoft network and the internet, static and dynamic address. Notice that as a standard, I don't even have the option for dynamic address. So uh, routing network determines how your route, traffic routes between Azure and the internet. So I'm gonna use a Microsoft network so that it'll come out closest to wherever the user is. Idle timeout, DNS name uh, label. I'm going to call this external. So it'll be external.w or westus2 cloud app azure.com. And then a domain name scope. If I wanted that, I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Okay, DDS protection. DDoS. I can do this. Uh, inheriting from the network, or I can specify, so like my network I created, I did not enable DDoS protection. So I could say, hey, I don't want it on the entire network, but I want it on this particular IP address. I'm just go, going to go ahead and inherit, or I can choose to disable, right? My network may have it, but I want it disabled for this IP address. So I'm going to say, leave it to inherit from my, my network. And then the tags thing that we've talked about before, and then review and create. Okay, this is going to create a public IP address for me that is going to be part of my resource group. Now, I'm not actually doing anything with it yet. Um, and I've got a bad request. 
Ah, another resource is using that. Okay. Uh, I can't use external.wus2. So let me see if operation details. All right. I'm going to have to recreate with something else. Uh, deployment failed. Okay, fine. Let me do this. Let me go ahead and try to create another one of these. So back to, it's not going to let me go back to my previous level. So back to public IP addresses. Let's create one. We're going to do this again and try to get around that little issue. Uh, name public IP. Actually, let me just do public ADDR for external server. And this time, let me just cheat. I'm not going to do redundancy. We'll do the Microsoft network. And this time, I'm not going to set a DNS label. So we'll just leave it IP address only. And then we can worry about DNS label later. OK, validation passed. Let me go ahead and create. Deployment is in progress. And there we go. That looks much, much better. So now I've got deployed my, uh, my public IP address. So if I go back to my public IP addresses, here I'm going to see it set up. Now remember, I don't have this associated with it. I can edit tags, open mobile, delete it. I can come in and not a whole lot you could set on this, but right here is where I can associate it with a load balancer, a network interface, which would be tied to a VM. Um, I have no VMs that I could interface it with. Uh, do I want to uh, have a load balancer working with this IP address if I've got you know multiple services that I need it working? Uh, that's where I would do that. Okay, there we go. We have a public IP address for our external server. Now, once we get a resource we can associate it with, then we'd associate this IP address with that uh, server. By the way, the IP address is right here, 51.141.172.63. And then I can go and configure and change any of the settings I want to with it. OK, there we go. We have a functional public, well, almost functional public IP address. It will be functional when we associate it with something.